be joking. You've got to be joking. Unrepresentative swill over there. He's more to be pitied than despised. He's simply going troppo. So all this question proves that if you've been on the back bench for too long, you shrivel up. You shrivel up. Tonight, the Pied Piper of Australian politics. The elusive Paul Keating popped up in public again today with yet another of his visions for Australia's future. Today I wish to propose the creation of a comprehensive national retirement income scheme. Unless we can move and move rapidly, we will put the Commonwealth Government age pension system under unbearable stress and condemn an entire generation of elderly people to an unsatisfactory and poorly provided retirement. The architect of Australia's superannuation system, Paul Keating, has been Australia's leading champion of compulsory super as the central means of funding retirement. So in 91, there was a, um, the unions were asking for a 3% pay rise, um, but Bernie Fraser at the Reserve Bank was getting worried about inflation and was getting ready to uh, hike up interest rates. Yeah. So as I recall, you, you, you transferred the 3% into super and there was a deal done with the ACTU to do that, right? And that was the beginning of superannuation. Yeah, it was, I wanted to, uh, with Bill Kelty, the two of us, but particularly, what I wanted to do was to give the workforce of Australia an enduring benefit from their happy participation in the reformation of the economy. You know, pulling wages down from 9% inflation down to three, two or three meant a lot of cooperation from the workforce. Now, 30 years later, you've had a lot, obviously a lot of hindsight, a lot of experience looking at it. Would you do anything different if you knew then what you know now? No, no, I don't think so, Alan, no, no, because you see, look, the classic scheme, if you look at the Norwegian fund or the Dutch fund, or what, it, what would have been the Hancock Fund, and that is your, your wages are levied at a certain amount, it goes into a national fund, the fund is managed by the government, and you get a pension from it. I What's didn't, wrong with that? I didn't want that. No, no, what I wanted was you got your pension from it, but you also got, you owned the capital. You owned the capital. Nearly three decades on from the creation of compulsory super, nothing has challenged the health of our superannuation system like COVID-19. What did you think of allowing people to take money out of their yeah. super during well, the pandemic? I mean, it was a, a breach of the, the key building block of superannuation is the preservation rule. You don't touch the money to age 60. It's not only retirees feeling the impact of the economic downturn. More than 3 million people withdrew 36.4 billion dollars worth of super during the pandemic. At least 450,000 of those were under 30. According to Industry Super Australia, over 700,000 people wiped out their total super balance, and most of those were under 35. The government made young people broadly carry the burden of, of, of the pandemic themselves, before JobKeeper and before JobSeeker. Yeah? Uh, and this means that someone 25, say, or 30, who's just pulled 25 or 30,000 out of their account, have lost half a million 30 years down the track. You know, half a million. Half a million for 30K now. You know, I mean, how, how could you do that to young people? So as these people get into their 50s and 60s, they're going to find they've got a very poor superannuation and they can thank the government for this. But they'll tell you that they needed the money now. Yeah, they, they needed did, it. Well, as we know, they didn't need the money. And as you and I know, Alan, the central bank's now buying $100 billion worth of bonds, uh, then another $100 billion, and now this week another $100 billion, So they didn't need the money. <laughs> but Superannuation Minister Jane Hume, who will now also take on the role of Minister for Women's Economic Security, defends the decision, given the extent of the crisis. A lot of Australians have cleaned out their super accounts during COVID-19, during the pandemic, because you know, the government has allowed them to do that. Do you think you'll come to regret that in later years? I think cleaned out might be a very misleading term, Alan. A lot well, of they people, emptied their accounts. They took all of their super out. A lot of people took money out of superannuation from duplicate accounts, and a number of those duplicate accounts were shut down in the process. That's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're talking about people tapping into their super to pay their bills, uh, well, I actually don't think that that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. At that time, a massive financial uncertainty when people were you know, losing their jobs at such a rapid 
rate. Uh, the ability to tap into your own savings your choice to do so, uh, to spend that money on paying down your mortgage, paying off your car loan, um, you know, paying down debts, cutting up credit cards, which we saw at a rate that we've never seen before last year. That's a good thing. Uh, but it wasn't compulsory. It was their decision. And I think that the coalition governments trust Australians enough to make the best financial decisions for them and their families. When Keating established the superannuation system, he set out to give a fair go to all Australians. But women, like Sue Walton, have consistently fallen behind. I'm an assistant in nursing in aged care. I've been there 17 years. I've got nine grandchildren and another one coming in July. Well, I'm 61 years of age now. When I was in my 40s, I was on track for retirement. Unfortunately, I got divorced and I started over again. I only have approximately $68,000 in my superannuation. I'm going to be in trouble when I retire. It makes me emotional because I'm a mother, a grandmother. It will affect my time when I retire as to the quality of life that I can live with my husband and also what I can do for my grandchildren. I work in a residential aged care facility. It's a very physically and mentally demanding job. Um, I have an injury at the moment that's occurred at work, so I can't see myself working till I'm 67. I physically can't do it. I'm actually in the uh, New South Wales Nurses and Midwifery Federation. I speak with a lot of other members, and we all have the same problem. My husband now, Andrew, was an interstate truck driver. He was found to have a form of leukaemia, could not work anymore due to having no immune system. So the money that he was getting is completely gone. All right, behave yeah. yourself, okay? So it has been a devastating blow to all of us, especially to him. Well, my thoughts on the superannuation freeze at the moment, from 2014 to now, at 9.5%, I can't really tell you the words that I would like to describe that from every hard-working Australian, but it's disgraceful. They can't keep penalising us year in, year out. I'm 61, I retire at 67 or 69, depending. That's large dollars to me. Imagine what it would be like for my children in 30, 40 years' time. I can't even get a pay increase that was promised to me. I'm not looking forward to getting on the age pension. How anybody survives on that, I have no idea. I don't have much hope for the future. It's just one day at a time. Average superannuation balances for men are around half what they need to be for a comfortable retirement. For women, they're around a third of what they need to be. So we're relying on our age pension system and we know that you know women over 60 are the fastest growing group of, of, amongst the homeless because they don't have adequate savings. Women have lower wages, more career breaks, uh, work more part-time they end up with lower superannuation balances than men. What the superannuation system in some respects is intensifying the inequities in working life. Around 67% of people over 65 rely on the aged pension in some way. It supplements the income of those who've outlived their retirement savings, have lost money due to market downturns, or who didn't have enough of a nest egg in the first place. Do you think the pension is adequate? The pension is a, a, a very suitable safety net as well as supplement to individual savings. It, on a um, global comparison scale, it's actually quite high. Uh, but you know, the reason why we have a compulsory superannuation system is because we want people to have a higher standard of living in retirement above and beyond that safety net of the age pension. The pension is very effective. In many respects, it's the backbone of the retirement income system. The pension has increased relative to wages, has increased relative to prices. When you, and you also have to look at what the extra support that people over 65 on the pension get. And as I say, the other support they get, the, the social transfers in kind, 
The value of that is more than the pension. The problem is, of course, that the, the Australian nation is ageing and growing and there will be a very heavy bill for governments in the future and that means a very heavy bill for the public. For Keating, reflecting on the adequacy of the pension comes back to wider discussions about the retirement system as a whole, particularly with an ageing population. This is one of the critical points. When I started this 35 years ago, 6.7 people between 15 and 65 carried the retirement burden of everyone over 65. Today that's 3.7 and by 2030 it will be 3. So you've got three people by 2030 looking after everyone over 65 where before there were six and a half people. So that, that, that burden uh, means that you, you want superannuation to be, to be able to withdraw the burden on the pension so the few taxpayers that are left in the system are not carrying it. You know? do, you, do you think part of the result of that is that the pension's insufficient really to, as, to, as a safety net? And I'm thinking particularly of women who often don't have superannuation because they've interrupted yeah. their, their careers. Well, um, I think, yeah, well I think pension adequacy is a really big point. But again, as the dependency ratio rises and you've got more people my age relying on three taxpayers only, to look after them, can we guarantee that the pension will even remain as generous as it is today? That's the big question. You see, this is why nothing beats self-provision. Nothing beats self-provision. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.